my wife and I are very happy to join you today for this jointly organized celebration and ushering in the Year of the Dragon. It's a long tradition at SECCI, at the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Going back 100 years, on the first day of Chinese New Year, meeting at this time to celebrate the New Year and look forward to the future. And indeed, as President Ko Chun Keng has just uh, spoken about, we have to look to the future as one of opportunities and look to seize those opportunities with determination and resilience. We have here a standing audience, and I know I should not give a long speech, which I do not intend to, so let, let me just make three points. First, I want to commend both SECCI and Business China for the good work you're doing. It's very important work, particularly in helping our businesses to navigate a changing regulatory climate and changing opportunities in the world around us. SECI has been doing very good work locally with our businesses through your two SME centers, as well as working with the trade associations to help guide businesses, provide advisory services, and especially to help them with data security and sustainability. This role will grow. I think the roles for both the SECCI and Business China will only grow. Our businesses face the challenges of digitalization as well as cybersecurity, which comes together with that, and a major challenge of moving towards sustainable business operations. We also face the challenge of navigating an increasingly uncertain world, which I'll come to. And in that regard, You've been, doing a, you've been playing a growing role in helping our businesses navigate external markets, set up shop, and grow. And international growth is, in fact, the main path of growth for many of our businesses and will be a source of prosperity for Singapore. Which brings me to my second point, which is that we have to learn to live with uncertainty. We have to learn to with, live with a profoundly uncertain world. Wherever we look, at the United States, at China, and globally, we now face multiple uncertainties at the same time. And this combination of uncertainties is unprecedented. We have to learn to live with it. It is unlikely that these uncertainties will be resolved or eliminated soon. Uncertainty does not mean a lack of opportunity. We have to look for opportunities. We have to spread our eggs and avoid concentrated bets. And most importantly, we have to deepen our own skills and strengthen the Singapore brand wherever we go. The other orientation we need as we live with uncertainty is to avoid either excessive pessimism or overly optimistic views. On any new market or new technology, avoid veering from one extreme to the other. Avoid looking at the world in black and white terms. And this is true especially in Asia. Asia has always been viewed with bold narratives, big bold narratives either overly bullish views or overly pessimistic views. And each of the major markets in Asia, major economies in Asia, is often viewed in black and white terms. There's usually a kernel of truth in these narratives, whether pessimistic or optimistic. There's usually a kernel of truth, which is then embellished and amplified by commentators and even the markets. And that is true for China today. In fact, we now face a barrage of pessimistic assessments of China. Virtually every day, we look at major newspapers around the world. There will be some negative assessment or negative news. Even questions around whether China is still investable. 
That China has challenges is indisputable. It has challenges in its property market, challenges with excessive debts accumulated by its local governments, challenges with weak consumer sentiment, and challenges with the undeveloped pension and social security system. Those challenges are indisputable. They are being addressed by the government in China, but they will take some time to overcome. What is also indisputable is that China has fundamental strengths, strengths which are in several areas, in fact, now growing and being fortified. It has a deep manufacturing ecosystem, no longer reliant on cheap labor. In many areas, not just EVs, which we read a lot about, in fact, the entire automobile sector is now formidable. Industrial robots, many other areas, a deep and formidable manufacturing ecosystem, which together with an infrastructure and logistic system that is now one of the most advanced in the world, creates a very competitive export economy. And China also has a huge talent pool. Its overall labor force is no longer growing, but its talent pool is growing. Engineers, scientists, and an increasingly skilled workforce, which is a form formidable advantage that China has. So bold narratives that focus either on China's vulnerabilities or on China's strengths are missing the whole picture. We have to recognize that the challenges and strengths can both be true at the same time. And indeed, will very likely be true for some time to come. And we have to avoid black and white views, but seek opportunities in China, in India, in Southeast Asia, globally, including in the United States and Europe, seek opportunities in a more uncertain and unpredictable climate. But if we look at the big picture, we are lucky to be in Asia. We are a small economy, Singapore, a small nation, with no lack of opportunities around us. If you just look at China, by the IMF's assessments, even with reasonably conservative assessments, China will account over the next five years for about one-fifth one -fifth of total global growth. And if you add India and Southeast Asia, the region we are in will account for well over one-third of global growth. So it's a region that's growing, unpredictable, many risks, but it is a region full of opportunity. And we have to take those opportunities while avoiding large concentrations of bets and spreading our eggs. Look for opportunities in specific areas of demand, specific technologies, areas with upside, but avoid concentrating our bets. And importantly, when we look at countries like China and India, which are continental scale economies, we have to also look at local opportunities at the provincial or state level, Chinese provinces, Indian states, because these are themselves economies that are larger than many industrial economies. They're hungry, in many ways even more capitalistic, and looking for many ways in which they can grow and thrive. So pay attention to the local environment. My third point is to commend the SECI for its good work in building optimism and resilience in our society. Not just your good work with businesses, but your work to build social cohesion. SECI and its partners, amongst the other business chambers, in fact, just last year, raised $10 million within one month to support scholarships, bursaries, and leadership development opportunities through the Lee Kuan Yew Centennial Fund. And you've been continually supporting students and working together with Mandaki and Sinda.
to ensure that we have an inclusive approach to supporting talent and skill generation in the next, next generation of Singaporeans. You are well placed, well placed to work as part of the Forward Singapore mission to develop a more inclusive society and to refresh our social compact. Build an inclusive workforce, including a workforce that embraces seniors, develop skills in every worker, deepen interaction between Singaporeans of different backgrounds, deepen the integration of our new citizens so that as we go forward, we stand united, we stay resilient amongst uncertainties, and we can look forward to a future of hope. So I hope the Year of the Dragon brings bountiful rewards for our businesses and most importantly, for our people. Once Rui.